Hello. Good evening, everyone. So the last talk of the day. And thanks to Lindell for a uh, great talk. And he's one of the legend in MPC, definitely. I'll be just touching uh, and building on the same topic. So I'm Jay, uh, co-founder of Silence Laboratories. It's a young cryptography-focused company building MPC libraries. And today we'll be talking what we have learned while, while working with our partners and customers, and mostly touching all these learnings through building digital assets. So first of all, MPC is not a magic, like Linda also told. There's lots of miscommunication around, particularly the hack which happened a couple of days back with multi-chain. It was not MPC, it was bad and implementation and bad policy in the organization. So there are a couple of dimensions which we have to touch, and therein we have to figure out what exactly the role of MPC is. Today we'll be touching user empowerment, some trust assumptions, speed, and usability. First thing, empowerment and trust. So not every design is self-custody. Let's see how. And this we have learned while we have been serving our customers, providing our libraries which are application agnostic. Until now, the whole field has been binary, whether it's custody, or self-custody. But certainly custody is a spectrum, and we have to see how we can define that. So we choose a framework which has three variables, usability, empowerment, and security. And we use the axis of empowerment and trust to define custody as a spectrum. And there are a couple of parameters. Number one, can transactions be blocked by an enterprise? Is the service permissionless? Is the whole signing key generation process totally transparent, and can I do permissionless recovery whenever I want? If these variables are met, then probably that's the best self-custody state. We have written a whole proper blog, which is right there, on this QR code link, which can be read. We define all the specs, how to define the custody, all the variables, and a couple of examples. Right, and based on that framework, what we came up with was these four zones, localized self-custody, distributed self-custody, shared custody, and then delegated custody. Let's see one by one. And this is the example which I personally like a lot because as you see in the picture, here in, what we are doing is we are splitting the keys into two parts, not literally, exactly same as Coinbase was, using two-party Lindell protocol. Your keys are now between your browser wallet or a browser plugin, and one, one on your phone. So there's no enterprise holding any key share. It's still with the user. You have full control on it. You can sign whenever you want. You can recover whenever you want. And the experience is very much like two-factor authentication. I will show you a, a short video. Yeah, when you initiate a transaction, it will send a push prompt on your phone. If you accept it, it will trigger the DMPC protocol in between and done. Very much like Duo, Okta, of the two FAs of the Web2 world. Now, second comes the shared custody model. There are multiple wallets in this domain where your keys are split between your, your phone wallet or the browser wallet and enterprise server. And therein, there is a trust assumption which we have to take into account. You, have, you are trusting the enterprise that are, they are properly managing your key share. It can't be stolen. They might be using secure enclave or a proper service. But therein, probably it might not be right to call it self-custody. They are positioned some bit, somewhere between called shared custody model. It can have one server one servers or multiple servers. And therein, we try to position a couple of wallets in the domain in both self, shared, and designated. And there are a couple of them whom we are working with as well. Now, another interesting thing which we understood while talking to the, talking to the partners is MPC is a very chatty protocol. And therein, there is an assumption that all the communications are trusted somehow. And there are a couple of avenues where people can launch some malicious attack. And therein, we have been facing demand of can we make this whole communication trustless? Can you make the whole communication to a state where the companies goes down, even then you have MPC wallet running into action? And therein we have been investigating a couple of protocols. We have been trying to make the whole communication decentralized, such that if the company goes down, then also you can have your MPC signing happening between your different devices. 
an interesting case which happened here is we have been working with a partner where we are building a, a social wallet where your key shares are hybridized between your phone, your friends and family's phones, and also the enterprise cloud. Now the notion here is the user can choose or there might be an algorithm to choose whether to, to choose the enterprise cloud through MPC signing or through the phones. But the main catch here is that when the company goes down, let's say the company is a startup running our coordinator or our enterprise, and when they go down, all wallets can still be accessed by the user because they can go to their um, friends and family and still run the MPC protocol. It's a total peer-to-peer -to -peer, uh, signing wherein we are leveraging a couple of protocols based on gossip like Waku, Wallet Connect, which we'll be releasing a couple of, uh, in some time very soon. And then comes the most interesting part, which we are very, very excited about, is efficiency. Signing matters. The time you spent to do a key generation or sign does affect the impact on the user base. So before going into the numbers, in general, MPC or TSS has four stages. Pairing, distributed key generation, there's a backup process like Lindell told, and then there is a signature process, and there are other elements like re uh, refresh and uh, recovery process when you lose one of the nodes. One key thing which you noted was that there's a particular element called secure multiplication subroutine in a protocol during keygen, which was very heavy. And that took around 50% of the time when we measured the, if it's, uh, the numbers across hundreds of phones. If you see the number here, you will see that uh, this subroutine in itself is taking around few tens to few hundreds of milliseconds, which might not be well uh, taken into account by the user who is trying to perform signatures or keygen very fastly. And these all protocols use Palier-based uh, designs. And then we also launched the same uh, benchmarking on trying to see how it performs on S devices like watch or phone. And if you want to scale and go to the next billion user, we believe that we have to be mobile fast. And that's why we are championing the whole perception of running at least one MPC node on your phone, and one can be anywhere else. So benchmarking is super important. So what is the other alternative when we can do something which is more real time, more fast? So oblivious transfer-based algorithms, which does secure multiplication, was the other alternative which we chose. And we ran a couple of benchmarks. Just to know, there are a couple of protocols in the domain, DKLS 17, 19, and there's a new one called 23, and there's a latest paper which, was, which came a couple of weeks back. What happened here is that we noted that the keys in went very, very fast. If you see, even for the two-party setup, you can do the keys in on laptop in 250 milliseconds, and on phone in around 1.2 seconds. And that's the general setup which we have observed in practice or in commercial estate. The most interesting thing is that you can sign also quite fastly. If you compare the, the most uh, widely used multi-party MPC protocol like ZZ80, 90, or 20, or CMPs, they take around a few hundreds of milliseconds to perform a signature even for two-party setup. But the implementation of DKLS, which we have done lately, both 23 and 19, you can perform signature in around 55 milliseconds on phones. And this is not taking into account the bandwidth or the network time between communicating between the phone and the cloud, but that will be the function of the network speed which you have. But the key takeaway, key takeaway here is that you ha we have reached up to a state where you can perform signature in very, very real time. Just to give you some hint, uh, between cloud running three, three nodes on the cloud and one on the phone, you can sign in around 1.2 seconds approximately, which is pretty fast. And that's one of the things which we are super proud of right now. And probably this is the fastest MPC implementation right now. Totally in Rust, very scalable. It scales from two to multi-party quite well. And just to note that when we design MPC wallet or a protocol, we have to be very, very aware, again, what is our trust assumption, what is our threat assumptions, and then only we can design. It's not a magic. We have to be very, very aware about what is the user base we are trying to target. On the same note, what we are going to do in September in Singapore is we are having a conference called Decompute, which is probably unique MPC focused conference on 12th of September. If you are around, definitely attend. You will have best cryptographers and best academicians in MPC who have written papers or who have designed protocols. They will be talking and exchanging ideas. It will be a super uh, impactful event, we believe. 
and that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you have questions, I will be happy to answer now or maybe later.